On Larry King Now, Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer, gives out his best tips. People lose patience. Uh, people don't follow through. People it's are always not the people, right? It's never well, the dog. It's never the dog, you, you know. Opens up about overcoming his own struggles. I personally feel that when it was not my time, you know, even if I throw, I put, took all those pills, uh, I was not able to kill myself. I really wanted to. And it was not my time. And solve some of our staffers' biggest dog dilemmas. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Cesar Milan is our special guest, best known as the Dog Whisperer, the renowned dog behavior expert and New York Times best-selling author, has more than 25 years of experience. He's one of the most sought-after authorities in the field of dog rehabilitation. His new series on National Geographic Wilds is Caesar 911. Later in the show, we'll talk with some of our staff members about their dogs. Let's talk about your new show. What basis of what's the concept of season 911 show, sounds like an emergency call to you well you know when people find out the dog whisper is not longer uh, was going to air and uh, people start writing letters and, and emails and and so pretty much was born at, at a 911 call you know everybody's uh, desperate of help but most of the time the letters were not from the owners were from what we're calling the whistleblowers. So neighbors, uh, workers, uh, family members, they say, no, 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 my family or my, uh, this person with a dog is in denial and is gonna kill somebody. And, and, and you know, it's a really severe cases that we work with. So that's how it was, so that's actually how it was born. So it's like a 911 call <laughs> it's a about dog so it's like a community driven. Yes. Give me an example of some emergencies you dealt with. Well, the fun, one of the funniest in, in this uh, season is uh, a restaurant owner, uh, a Greek guy that we, we became super good friends and he would come with his three Maltese to his restaurant and the Maltese would attack everybody. So the people will leave the restaurant, and so now the waitress are, are losing their tips. And you say, well, who cares? You know, uh, uh, just, it's just, just money, you know, give them the food. And, but they're losing money. And so the, the waitress is actually does the one that called me, his wife and everybody else, because they were losing business, you know? So that was, that, that was a funny thing. Can every dog be rehabilitated? Dogs, yes, people know. <laughs> you know, most of the time people don't want to put the effort uh, uh, that is required for, for, for a dog to achieve harmony and balance. Remember, dogs don't care about material things, you know. What they care is about achieving harmony and balance with you. But for that, it requires the investment of time, exercise, discipline, then affection. In one episode, neighbors encourage a woman to put her dog down yeah. because the dog showed aggression even after working with multiple trainers. Yeah. What did you do with that dog? Well, most trainers focus on the dog. I focus on the person, and you're gonna see in this in this show that we are definitely is more people training than do dog rehabilitation. And the perception that people get by when a dog attacks them and the fear that they develop, trainers never address that. And so that's why I say I train people and rehabilitate dogs. So I train them to see what they're doing wrong. Everybody focus on what the dog is doing wrong, but the dog can't speak and say, wait a minute, what about what the human is doing? <laughs> Nobody's addressing the human. So that's pretty much what, what I want. Do dogs actually. have insecurity? Uh, of course. They're, they actually become very insecure when they live with someone who doesn't know what he's doing, right? So they, they don't feel safe. And that's actually, dog lovers uh, are, are it's very common in the dog lover world because they love dogs, but doesn't mean they know dog. So a person with a little dog uh, is walking in the street and they see a Rottweiler, a pit bull, what they do with the little dog is they lift them up, right? And then they walk away. Even though the Rottweiler and the pit bull want nothing to do with them, it just automatically they think because it's a Rottweiler, a pit bull is gonna kill the little dog. Even though the little dog is the one that's doing the behavior of aggression. You <laughs> Why see? is the little dog doing that? <laughs> because little dogs get away with a lot of things, you know, and people don't really practice leadership uh, or discipline with them. Uh, versus people who own a Rottweiler or a pit bull. Children are good with dogs, though. I notice at my home, the ch my youngest son is yeah. the dog's owner. Yeah. Well, yes, because they're not trying to, um, you know, rationalize anything. It's just, this is what we're doing, this is what we're not doing. And so it's a very matter-of-fact relationship. You know, grown-ups are the ones that are thinking, what is it, you know, a lot of people say, what is the dog doing? Is, uh, you know, or why is he doing that? So they're trying to rationalize their whys. The show is Caesar 911 on National Geo Wilds uh, channel, great channel. Uh, some of our staff members have questions for you. Check this one out. Hi, Caesar. my name's Trevor. I am an editor at Aura TV. 
And this is my dog, Hunter. And he's a little too obsessed with his ball. If we don't have a ball, he's constantly just nuzzling our pockets because he thinks we have one and we're keeping it from him. So hoping there's some way we can tone down his obsession with the ball, but still keep him interested in playing fetch because it is a great way to exercise him in the morning and night. Oh, dog. Okay, so three things. Rules, boundaries, limitation. Obsession is directly created by the lack of limits. So since, since we have him here, you have a ball? I actually do. Oh, perfect. So here he's already telling you how, how the feeling is. So yeah, I'm gonna show you. Not yet, not yet. Bring him over here. So what you have to learn first is, is to give a space to the ball. The touch, by the way, the touch that I do, is just to snap the brain out of it. Because most of the time what people do is they do this, they hide the ball, and so the dog still focus on it. So that doesn't end the exercise. The dog have to learn to actually back. Can you do this? Part? There, there you go, there, that's better. So this is the, there you go. He have to learn just to leave the ball alone. He's still not completely relaxed, but eventually gets to the point where the dog forgets about the ball, and that's how the exercise ends. Normally, what happens is people give the ball, and they reward that state of mind. So the brain never learned to relax in front of the ball. So the ball have to represent two things, excitement and relaxation. You understand what great. I'm saying? Yeah, it makes sense. That was great. Well, he have to, it, it, the relaxation takes a little, a little longer. Uh, another thing, never pull the ball away from the dog mouth. He will release it. Most people, what they do is leave it, leave it, drop it, and then they start pulling it. So that, what, what it creates is just actually creates a resistance of a dog. So if you just hold it, there you go. See, they let it go. We'll be right back with more <laughs> of Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. His new show on National Geo Wilds is Caesar. 911. Coming up, how did Caesar learn to rehab dogs? And we'll talk about how he got his start right after this. We're back with Caesar Milan. His new show is Caesar 911 on National Geo Wilds. Great pleasure having with him. Where did this, this thing with you and dogs begin? I grew up in a farm in Sinaloa, Mexico, and my grandfather always say, never work against Mother Nature. Always gain their trust, their respect, and they're going to give you a beautiful gift called loyalty. So I grew up with that philosophy, and we had chickens. You know, we have all the animals that were, you know, having a farm. When, I, when we moved to the city, I started watching Last in Ring Tintin. And that's when I say, I'm going to go to America so I can learn from Americans and then come back to Mexico and open my own dog psychology center or my own dog training um, center. But once I came to America, I realized that most people didn't know how to walk a dog off leash. Everybody has a leash on a dog, you know, and, and, and that's when I start walking dogs for people. I didn't, I didn't know I was going to open a dog psychology center, you know. Uh, they start calling me the Mexican guy who can walk a pack How of dogs. How did the whisperer start? Because I was walking a pack of dogs, and they said, well, it's a Mexican guy, but it sounds racist, so, the way they, so let's just call him something else. And, the, and then the uh, horse whisperer came out, and he's like a dog whisperer. So I was walking 40 dogs, off leash, pit bulls and rottweilers, from Inglewood to South Central. Right? I didn't know it was illegal to walk dogs off leash. You know, I just came 40 dogs off leash? Off leash, yeah, because that's all I know. In Mexico, people don't put a leash, as, uh, at least not where I'm from. You know, oh. dogs are off leash. So that's what I did, and that's how, that's how this thing uh, was developed. Wow. You're, you're, you're proof of the American dream. Whoa. Did you ever have a dog attack you? All the time, all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, because I work with dogs who have developed what people call aggression, you know. Obviously, they don't respect people in intimate space. And so that's, that became my expertise, you know, to work with uh, guys who attack, uh, kill a dog, or almost uh, injure a human. And Is the bigger the dog, the worse the fear? For me? For most people, it's the bigger. Obviously, thing. most people can deal with a bite of a chihuahua, right? Uh, but but uh, when it comes to a larger breed, and then people are, become afraid of it, especially if it's two of them and it's a pack attack. What's the dog psychology center? The dog psychology center is a place where we return the nature of a dog back to normal, where he becomes social. We know dogs are social, but then they become antisocial from the lack of exposure, from the lack of fulfillment. You know, most dogs don't, most people that have a big backyard, they say, well, I have a big backyard and that should be enough for my dog. But what they don't realize is the dog feels contained. And so that uh, feeling of con being contained create, creates this depression of this frustration. And so when a, a dog's being a predator, the easiest way for release frustration or depression is a bite. That's the easiest way for them. 
So they're, they're, re they're releasing energy. You're building a city for dogs, right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I bought 43 acres, and I felt that uh, uh, it's, it's a, it needs to be a place where humans can learn how to be in a coffee shop. So we're building a coffee shop for people. Is there any breed that drives you nuts? Oh, any, no, they're all... They're any all breed dogs. that is the hardest to train or deal with? I would say that the hardest thing to train is a human that is a stubborn. <laughs> You know, in denial, humans who are in denial, you can't really get through their frame of mind, you know? But I don't think a dog has the, the, the desire of not being you happy. You hit a dog. Touch, yeah, touch. Hitting oh, is yeah. different because hitting for me is, is more out of frustration. So when, if a dog is going to go after a chicken or a cat or whatever, if I touch, it's just to snap them out of them. It's like when people panic and you How do that. How about owners, just... if their dog makes a mistake in the house, they put the dog's nose in it oh, and that's slap a, the Oh, that's dogs. an old fashioned thing, right? Don't do that. But it doesn't really make sense for the dog. It doesn't, it doesn't really work, uh, you know? It's not a general way to address the situation. It's best to have a structure. It, that's body training, you know, that's when. Aren't there smart breeds and dumb breeds? I don't think I have met a dumb word. dog. <laughs> uh, I think it's more the abilities they can do, a Border Collie versus, uh, you know, uh, King Cavalier. So one can actually do some type of activities that appear smarter than the other one. But one thing about, that they have in common is the ability to love, the ability, right. you know, the unconditional. They, they all have that. So you can't, love. That's uh -huh. right. You can't say that King Cavalier loved less than a Border Collie. All right, editor Alex Logan submitted this question for you about his dog, Tucker. Check this out. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm an editor for Larry King. Uh, this is Tucker. He's a, dog, uh, he's a Chihuahua miniature pincher mix with a lot of energy, and we like to get him a lot of exercise. But he usually wears down his pads, sometimes to bleeding, when we exercise him a lot. Do you have any tips for exercise or for taking care of his paws that will uh, protect them and save them and not cause them to limp? Oh, that's, that's, that's a very kind thing, right? But those, the, the great thing about America is we create boots for dogs, you know, and that's something that you don't see in Mexico, boots for dogs. So that's easier to take care of it. You boots. Know. Boots, yeah, special boots. They were made actually for the snow, you know, because dogs get uh, frozen, uh, frozen uh, paws over there. But then they brought it to the city. And that's actually, people in Vegas use it a lot because they get so hot, they can't walk them. Are you saying Mexicans are better with dogs than Americans? Dogs in Mexico are skinny, but they don't have psychological problems. Dogs in America are chunky, and I have a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> what dog? You have a pet bull, right? I have a, yeah, that's my right hand. So it's a Mexican and a pit bull teaching the world about relationship. Well, why do we fear pet bulls? Well, we fear well, dogs. No, pet bulls have killed. Yeah, it's true. We, many breeds have killed. But the thing is, because we don't know dogs, obviously when, it, when, it, when we enter into the more powerful ones, we're not gonna be able to how to deal with power. Yeah, so it, it, we have aggression um, with all types of breeds. But it's not, the problem is not that we have aggression uh, with dogs, the problem is that we don't know dogs. Pet bull is not born aggressive. They're right? born aggressive, they're super cute. My old dear friend, the late Lenny Bruce, used to tell a joke about Doberman pinches. They're wonderful, Doberman pinches. You, Breed them, you train them, you raise them, you get them when they're little babies, and eight years old, they kill you. <laughs> Caesar will talk about the price of fame after this. <laughs> Back with Caesar Milan, his new show is National Geographic Wild Caesar 911. What's the biggest mistake made when you're training a dog? Uh, people lose patience, uh, people don't follow through, uh, people are not consistent, uh, people it's are always not committed. the people, right? It's never well, the dog. It's never the dog. You, you know, dogs still, you can't read a book, you know, can, can, you know, you can't give them a key so they can get out and come back when they're tired. Uh, you know, so definitely we have to put the responsibility on the human. You become a TV star. What's been the, you paid a price for fame. You've had some personal struggles. You were on our show we did on suicide yeah. once. Yeah. You tried to calm yourself. Yeah, I felt uh, a loser. I felt like a failure and that took me to that spiral of uh, not being needed around earth anymore. <laughs> You know, so How did you beat that? Well, I personally feel that when it was not my time, it, you know, even if I throw, I put, took all those pills, uh, I was not able to kill myself. I really wanted to, and it was not my time. And it was not my time. How long and ago was that? Three years ago. Three years that's, ago. That's that soon. Yeah. That early. Yeah, three years Your ago. Your children, did they have a tough time with it? We all did. We all did. The way the divorce came uh, <laughs> to be, to be. Um, 
to be invited into it, it wasn't it wasn't a very friendly one. Are you back with your children now? Yes, yes, yes. We, they had a trouble with it. They, we all we all had a really unstable moment at that time. We didn't know how to. Do you ever get that feeling again? The feeling of suicide? No, no, not anymore. It was a uh, it was a very specific uh, feeling that I got when I, when I went into that uh, zone of depression. Was it an event? It was the event of being, feeling neglected, you know, rejected by the pack, for that's how I call it, you know, that... You but you've already been successful, right? Uh, and the standards of, uh, of the world, yes. The dog whisperer, you <laughs> yeah. were... Books and, you know, uh, made a little bit of money, which I lost all of it. And, and so I started all over. Uh, the only good thing about this time is I speak English and I have papers. <laughs> <laughs> Are, is working with dogs therapeutic for you? Absolutely. It's nothing better than... Because they live in the moment. They really don't care what happened in the past. They don't care about what's going to happen in the future. They really help you to focus on what's important at that time. And I, I truly enjoy helping a dog stay alive, you know, because I work with dogs who people want to euthanize. They want to kill them. They're, they're, they're the aggressive ones. They're labeled that way. And so for me, I don't see that. I see this dog you as misunderstood. Are you ever putting a dog down? Well, if it's suffering, no. You know, my, my dog, Daddy, I, I have to do that because he had cancer. So obviously I did, uh, I, I did say to the doctor, you know, put him down because he's suffering. But if it's a psychological problem, I... I don't think it's that. I think do, you have to try people, uh, You would know better than anybody. Do dogs communicate with each other? Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean... They do things like that. How? <laughs> do you think they're telling each other stories? I mean, what What do you think? Not a story, not like uh, Caesar just went to see Larry, you know? No, not that kind of story. They just go, how you feel, you know? Uh, uh, do you want that or do you want that? Uh, do you want to play with this? You know, you want to dig right here? <laughs> you know, you want to go see the horse? Yeah, they, they have very in the moment. I mean, you can see that if you go to a dog park, you can see the communication. You notice, I know when somebody dies, that's a, the dog feels remorse. Well, the dog do feel the loss, you know, especially if, if they were close, yeah. you know? But if they were not close, they were just roommates. You know? No, but if a, a, a man takes you, that's famous story in Japan, the yeah. father of the dog that uh, built the statue of the dog at the train station. I witnessed that with my grandfather. My grandfather died 105, and his dog just went to the grave right then and stayed there. It's a yeah. beautiful story. Yeah, it's true. It's truth. So they, they feel it themselves. The dog takes it, feels the emotion of the loss. And there's the loyalty, you know, that they owe to, to that person. We have another question from one of our staffers. Check this one out. Hey Caesar, I'm Jason and this is Pepper. I adopted her last year. She's about four years old. The rescue group found her living on the street. She just had puppies. She's a pretty easygoing dog, but I have two issues with her that I was hoping you could help me out with. One, she has a bit of separation anxiety. So whenever I'm not around, she kind of runs around looking for me and whines. She's a little manic in that way. The second issue I'm having with her is her dog aggression. She's pretty friendly with people, but I never know what kind of dog is gonna set her off. So when we're walking down the street, fur in her back will stand straight up and she'll start growling and I never know if she's going to play with a dog or attack it. So I'm wondering if you'd help me figure out those two issues. Okay, Jason is here with Peppa. You know, uh, that what I saw over there is not aggression. It's, it's a dog that, uh, that actually has uh, uh, their boundaries, you know, yeah. how long. Many dogs are very overwhelming, you know, and so for a dog that is a little unsure about it or much more calm or mu much more polite, and then they feel overwhelmed about it, ah, so they do something like that. That's not aggression. So what do you do in a situation like that? You just let her well, snap or? Mm, that's one way. That's, that's the dog way, you know, because the dogs are saying, look, just slow down or give me space. Right? Right. Yeah. And we do that, you know, uh, human to human. You know, if we don't know each other, we don't just want to be in people's intimate space. So, but the, uh, the separation anxiety, what, the way we have to practice that is you have to do it in, in a room like this where you actually ask the dog to stay in a, in a, in a corner right, on, on her bed or whatever, and then you walk away, or you're in the kitchen or whatever, and she have to stay there. Most people, what they do is allow the dog to follow them all over the house. And then when, they're, when, they, go, when they go to work, they say, bye-bye, but the dog is right there by the door. Then they close the door. That's how they develop the separation inside, because nobody told them there was going to be a separation indoor. So, so in, in other words, the human have to practice stay, and then the human does his, uh, his ritual that he does in the morning, and then he goes away. Are you capable of doing that? 
think so. Yeah, it's I easy. I do it with you. She had babies. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. done it with me. Thanks, Caesar. Thank Thanks, you, Jason. Thank you. Hey, take leave Pepper alone. She's a calm one. We'll be one back. Too. What? She's a calm one too. She is. Yeah. Yeah. She's a very nice dog. He t secretly hates her. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be back with our remaining moments with uh, Caesar Milan. We will uh, take your questions. We'll play a little game if you only knew right after this. We're back with Caesar Milan. His new show on National Geographic Wilds is Caesar 911. Do you think you've changed? Becoming a successful? Lot. Yeah. A lot. I mean, I'm a better dad, a wiser dad, which is, after all, what, what I, what I want to be for my kids. Were you discovered by Will Smith and his wife? Uh, yeah, well, it helped a lot, you know, they helped me a lot. Jada, particularly, she, uh, she actually hired a teacher so I can learn English, and that was a blessing from, from you her. You work with Hilary Duff, Scarlett Johansson, Nicolas Cage, Patti LaBelle, Howie Mandel, not bad. Eva Mendes. What bad. is the Cesar Milan Foundation? My focus in helping, you know, uh, America more than anything is education, so I created a curriculum with Yale University and myself that we call My Degrees. And we give this uh, education to preschoolers and kindergartens so they learn how to be with their dog. You know, because in that age, they don't know a Rottweiler from a, from a Jack Russell. They're all dogs. So they actually have a perfect perception uh, to learn about how to be with a dog, how to read a dog. And so at the same time, I'm also creating campaigns, spay neuter campaigns, because in America, we kill four to five million dogs a year, and this is all taxpayer money. Right, so it takes $100 to euthanize each dog. So if you do the math, we spend a lot of money, uh, taxpayer money spent, uh, spent on killing dogs. So that's another thing, you know, spay neuter campaigns and then rescue, rehabilitation, and adoption. Oh, we have some social media questions. Valley Girl on Instagram. My friend's dog is absolutely adorable and lovable. However, he has a pretty severe chewing habit. He chews on walls, carpet, corners of the kitchen cabinets. And while they're outside or on walks, he picks up anything and everything can get in his mouth. She's taken to training, nothing seems to work. Yeah, training a dog is not really gonna solve the problems. Understanding what the needs of a dog are, are definitely, uh, that dog definitely will benefit with uh, agility. Uh, redirecting the energy into something positive, you know. Uh, teaching so what the dog do you do when he's rescue. chewing things? Well, the chewing is an expression of a dog saying, I'm bored, right? If the dog is, 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 nobody's fulfilling his need, nobody's understanding him. So they're gonna go and release their frustration in, in furniture or, or in tennis shoes or things like that. But the, the right thing to do is not to train the dog, sit down, stay calm, heal. That's what most people do, is to do agility, is to do uh, search and rescue, is to take him uh, swimming and things like that. Marla Jar on Instagram, are there any other TV series or shows you'd love to be a part of? Well, you got enough on your plate, <laughs> right? Yeah, Unless I would like you're... to do a Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Wassel of Google wants to know, what are Caesar's thoughts on the Westminster Dog Show allowing mixed breeds in the agility competition? I love it, yeah. I love it. Yeah, because they, they, you get to see they're all athletic, you know, they're, they're all athletes, and, and, and it has nothing to do with the breed, it has to do with the capability. You know, I think we're evolving, like, you know, uh, back then it was certain race, they can only do uh, sports, and now everybody can do it. So it's pretty much, we're finally evolving with our dogs. You know, it's all dogs have a chance to compete, regardless if they're not purebred. It's a fun show to watch. I love it, you know. The winner you see this spirit. year was very cute. Yeah. I like that dog. You see the, the spirit uh, of a dog. Uh, we'd like to end this show at a game called If You Only Knew. Just throw some questions. What's your favorite place to travel to? Uh, Costa Rica. Biggest regret? Biggest regret, none. What animal would you like to work with other than dogs? Elephants. Why? Because it challenges you, you know, it's just, you gotta stay calm, you know, you gotta uh, definitely understand confidence and, and- Are they smart? Well, I think everybody says that. I have never met, uh, <laughs> like, work with one, except I give a, a bath in Australia to one, but yeah, I think, um, I most, think I will grow a lot with that. Most challenging dog you work with? Challenge, Holly. Uh, a dog that bit me, sent me to the hospital, which was a, a Labrador, by the way. Really? Yes, right here. Biggest splurge? Splurge. What have you spent money on? Um, I spent a lot of money at the ranch. Yeah, and a tractor. You know, Most valuable lesson you've learned? Embrace uncertainty. Good line. Person you most look up to? My grandfather. Most memorable moment? The birth of my kids. Biggest pet peeve? My nails long. <laughs> what would you say is your biggest flaw? 
I, I think I'm, 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 uh, I like things perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm married to one. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't a dog behavior specialist, what would you be? Uh, I would love to work uh, um, like planting trees and really anything with nature. Yeah. What do you think about cats? I think they're special. There's not much to do with them. That's why there's no cat parks. <laughs> why? There's no cat parks? Because they will be in the tree the whole day. You're not going to have fun with them. Are they antisocial? No, they're just special. Special, you mean? Because <laughs> Cleveland Amory, the great dog lover and writer, always hated cats until he picked up a stray cat one day, brought it home, and loved this cat. Yeah. And this cat was also affectionate. Yeah. I've never seen an affectionate cat. It changes cat. life. Yeah. Well, I have, a, I have a llama, I have a, a horse, a tortoise, a 10 chickens, two chameleons, a macaw, and four guinea pigs, and 20 dogs, a uh, 100 uh, koi fish. They come when you feed them. Do the dogs get along with all Absolutely. of them? Absolutely. You're an amazing man. Thank you, sir. Thanks to my guest, Cesar Milan. His new series is National Geo Wild Cesar 911. And remember, you can find me, or Cesar 911, you can call it either way. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things.